Maybe you or someone you know likes the idea of sushi, but not the idea of raw fish. Well, today I'm going to show you how to make carnivore sushi. So what is carnivore sushi? Well, carnivore sushi is simply replacing the rice and the fish in the whole sushi model with potatoes and beef. Now you could use pork, chicken, anything you want in this. If you want to keep the rice, you could. I'm going straight meat and potatoes today. So let's get started on these potatoes. What I have here are four small red potatoes that I've peeled and we're just going to add a little bit of olive oil and kosher salt to them. Just drizzling maybe half a tablespoon of oil on there. We're gonna add a good amount of salt. I'm just gonna mix these up, get them coated on all sides. Now we're gonna wrap these in foil so we can get them baking out on the Weber kettle. Gonna take each potato, wrap it up good. All right, our potatoes are wrapped and ready. Let's move on to the beef portion of this. Surprise, surprise, the beef portion is tri-tip. Now this is about a two and a half pound tri-tip that I've trimmed up fairly aggressively. Wanted to get as much of the fat and any of the membrane off as I possibly could. So we're just gonna season this with a mix of hickory smoked salt and ground black pepper. Wanna get a good generous coating on here. Ends and everything. There we go, all seasoned up. Time to get this tri-tip and the potatoes out on the Weber kettle. All right, I've got the Weber kettle set up indirect. I have some foil there just to catch any drippings. And I've got one briquette basket, pretty full of charcoal that's burning really well. I'm gonna be shooting for a temperature around 250 today. First thing I wanna do is I wanna get these potatoes on and I'm gonna put them closest to the briquette basket. I'm gonna get my tri-tip on here temperature probe in and I'm gonna put a piece of olive wood on here for some smoke today all right we are set our olive is starting to catch let's get the lid on and start smoking I'm gonna take my top vent down to about half and my bottom vent I'm gonna to set to just about one-third we've got good smoke coming Oh, and that olive, I love that olive smell. I'm gonna be cooking this tri-tip the same way I would using my 110 sear method. I'll put a link to that up here. That's my favorite way to cook a tri-tip. And that's <laughs> olive smoke, God. <laughs> and once this tri-tip and those potatoes are done, we're gonna turn them into carnivore sushi. All right, our internal temperature is at 110. It's time to sear this. I'm gonna move these potatoes aside just for a minute. Get a little more room over here to remove our temperature probe temporarily. Now we're gonna get a little bit of a sear, not much because of the way this is running right here, but that's all right. Just want a little bit of color on the outside besides this beautiful redness on there right now. And again, just simple salt and pepper. So after we sear this, we'll put it back on the indirect side get the temperature probe back in and take it to 130. That's my 110 sear method. Getting some nice direct flame from that olive wood that's reignited. Great smell coming off this. All right, let's move this back in direct. Let's get our potatoes back in the front. That olive wood will die down to smoke as soon as we get the lid back on. Let's get our temperature probe back in, try and get it right about the same spot. All right, our temperature probe is showing 116, perfect. We took it at 110, seared it, would go up a little bit. All right, let's get our lid back on, finish this off. All right, we just hit 130 internal. Let's get our tri-tip off and wrap it. really tight and that's going to rest for about 15 minutes. Let's check our potatoes and see how they're doing. 
Let's take this one and check it right here. I'm just gonna poke it through the foil that I've opened up so it's only one layer going through here. Just to see, tenderness. That's pretty good. All right, let's get these off. Get them inside. Start making our carnivore sushi. All right, so we have our potatoes here and we are now gonna prep these so that they sort of mimic what the rice would be on a piece of sushi. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut them in half, just like that. If there's any sort of bad pieces that kind of snuck through, just cut those off. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut these in half and then in half again. So each half potato is gonna end up with four pieces. And we're just gonna work with these three potatoes today. That last one was just a little too small. Should have picked a bigger one. All right, we're gonna set these potatoes aside and move on to our tri-tip. All right, with our tri-tip here, what we're going to do, we can see the grain generally in this area is running this way. So I am gonna cut across the grain right here. Try to get into the center. Let's get a look at that. Oh yeah, exactly as I want it. Nice, medium, rare. Okay, I'm gonna work with this piece today and I'm gonna set this aside because this is all we're really gonna need to make this carnivore sushi. So the potatoes we cut were just about finger width. So imagine that when you're cutting this here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go about finger width and we're gonna make slices like that. And this is just the first step in this process. We're gonna make a few of these slices. Oh, just beautiful medium rare there. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut each of these in half in this fashion, down the middle. And if it's a thick piece like this, cut it three times. One, two, so you end up with three pieces. And if any of them seem too thick, do the same thing. Cut it another time because you want it about finger width this way also. Now that we have that, if it's a long piece, we're gonna cut them so they're about a little over an inch and a half long. And they don't have to be perfect. So these are the pieces we're gonna start with. Let's get to assembling our carnivore sushi. I've picked out the pieces of potato that I want to work with right now so I can start assembling these. It's going to take your piece of tri-tip, pull it over the top. Just try and match them to size. It's not going to be perfect on every single one. So now it's time to dress these up a bit with some different flavorings on top. First thing I'm gonna go for is a little traditional when you're talking about beef and things like that on some of these. Just a little bit of horseradish. Now a few others I'm gonna dress up with some barbecue sauce. Just glaze them on top. Pick your favorite barbecue sauce to do this. The last four, I'm gonna drizzle a balsamic glaze. And there we go, carnivore sushi. And I get to taste it. All right, I'm gonna try one of each of these for you. And I think I'm gonna start with the horseradish one because horseradish on things like tri-tip and roast beef just goes great. So let's see. There we go. Mm. <laughs> it's like a bite of steak and potatoes. It's great. I mean, that extra flavoring on there gives you that, you know, little punch of horseradish. But you are eating a sushi-sized portion. Sushi, sushi. Say that fast. Sushi-sized portion in each bite. All right, let's go for some with the barbecue sauce on top now. Mmm. That's really good. Again, try tipping potatoes in a bite. All right, now I'm going for the balsamic glaze one. That dark black balsamic glaze on this pink meat just looks terrific. Let's see how it tastes. Mmm, 
that balsamic gives you like a, a very earthy sweetness on there with the meat. All three of these flavorings, these sauces work perfectly on here. But the great thing about this is you could do whatever you want on here. You could put wasabi on here if you really wanted to sort of mimic that sushi experience. Really, this is an appetizer sized delivery system for meat and potatoes, tri-tip, sirloin, whatever you want, and it's awesome. Mm. So if you want to try something fun, a different way to serve some tri-tip, some sirloin, anything you want with some potatoes, mimic that sushi experience, this is it. <laughs>